If you're watching this video and you think you're having a little bit of deja vu, it's because you might have seen this di design before. So a couple of days ago, I released a tutorial on a villager sorter, which is effectively a way f to turn all of the villagers that you get from your breeder into villagers that you want. So if you don't want these guys, these guys, or that real, you can just destroy all the villagers or kill all the villagers you don't want. And then, you know, they'll just keep replacing it keep replacing the ones that you killed from the villagers in the stockpile. If you found, the, found one that you liked, you could drop them below and send them off to wherever you wanted them to go. Uh, and that was great. This was great. I built this on Minerva. We built this for ourselves. I built it with six uh, stations instead of five, but um, there was a problem. This minecart going back and forth is really slow, and I found a little bit of a solution. As you can see, this design is uh, a little bit faster. It's a, it's a touch bit quicker. The the villagers are getting spit out uh, slightly faster. It's a it's a much easier way to trade at a, at a much faster speed. Uh, I'm talking louder because this thing is running really really quick and it is almost as fast as one person can keep up with. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to build it. So let's hop into creative and start the tutorial. So if you've built this trading hall before, I would highly recommend you do, uh, even though you're watching the upgraded video. I'm not going to do the entire tutorial again, uh, because I already showed this in a previous video, and you'll be pleasantly surprised to find that what I just showed you is only an upgrade. You can keep the same design and change almost nothing, and just add in everything that I just showed you in the background. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start with a bare bones design. This is, uh, I finished up the tutorial that I, I ended on because when I last showed how to build this, I only showed a couple modules and it looks like I forgot a piece. All better. So we're gonna start with the water stream. Uh, you're going to have to have everything you see here. I guess you don't technically need the drop shoot thing if you found a better method, but I will be modifying the other design. So you're going to need this to start. We're gonna start with the item stream in the back. I do this because it's the lowest down and it's kind of the easiest to just start with. Uh, and you're just going to need a very simple ice stream going right above the rails from the back here. And if I'm not mistaken, you're going to have to push it out a block or two here because we're going to have a dispenser shooting into it. Um, and that's pretty much it. You can pretty much put the ice in just for now and then you can trail it pretty much to about here. You want it to be in line with this uh, block over here. So you're going to want it about that far. You can go ahead and rip out this old wiring if you put that in. Uh, it's not going to be necessary anymore. Uh, this will just be a rail. And if you want to just get this out of the way, you can go ahead and put the dispenser in. Uh, this will be the new way for the minecarts to get up. And then behind that dispenser, you're going to want hoppers coming out the back. So just trail it like that. And then this is where your ice stream will meet up with it. We can pretty much leave that alone for now. Next, you're going to want the system that actually spits out the item. So we're going to want the uh, dropper right here facing over that ice. And then we're going to take that right there and put all the all, all three hoppers in going that far now this won't have any power anymore so you're probably going to want to put like the one rail that i don't have there uh, i just put a normal regular rail right there it's not a problem uh, and then you're going to want to put a cactus here this is what will destroy your mine carts and uh, i know some of you might be wondering in my experience, I haven't stress tested this, but I've been using this for a long time. 100% of your minecarts should be picked up by the hopper before the cactus destroys them. 100%. Um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I've never seen a minecart actually get destroyed by that. But uh, out the back of this, we are going to have some pretty simple wiring. So we're going to have to take a comparator to read from this hopper into a block, into a piston, into an observer, which will be facing that right there in a second. So I'm going to face it like that. And then that's the one observer you need. Now you're going to need slime blocks, which I'm going to have to go and grab. And then that's basically how we're going to move this. So whenever this extends, it'll click that dropper. My block sounds are really quiet, but just to make sure your item always makes it in the stream, you can put a couple of blocks right around it, just like so, and then finish up that right there. Next, you're going to want to actually put your water stream in. So you can just put that in right there. And if you didn't screw up, then it should just flow to the end like that. Pretty simply, you can just put another block, complete the circuit here, and your water stream will go right to the end. Now you're going to want to stop at one block before the end, and we're going to use this nifty new thing that 1.13 added with soul sand. I'm pretty sure you already know this, but if you put water sources above a soul sand block, it'll actually make the items float. Uh, we can show that right here. Uh, we're going to have to need this spruce slab in a second, so we're just going to block off this hopper for now, and then place in one water source, two water source, three water source, Water log a slab, and then uh, you can let it flow just one more block. 
That way the items will always get stopped right up on this slab, and then they'll flow straight into the hopper. And then every single one of them will make it into the dispenser for the minecarts. And this is basically your minecart retrieval stream. So already what you would have in place is the minecarts will flow to the end, break off on this cactus, and then this piston will shoot out of the dropper into the thing. Uh, and you don't want to block that, you want to just make sure that every single one of them will make it into the stream. Next, you're going to want to actually fill this with minecarts. Uh, not a problem. I would recommend having a... I don't know. I haven't really tested this with different amounts because minecarts are fairly cheap. If you guys got, if you guys have any kind of iron farm, then you shouldn't have any problem getting uh, droppers. But, um, or droppers, you shouldn't have any problem getting minecarts. I would just recommend putting 9 or 10 in there. Uh, it'll only be 1 or 2 flowing at once, but this water stream out the back can be a little slow, so you can probably get away with 5 if you're working with the bare minimum, but I would encourage you to test for yourself. I put these droppers above it just because it's a minor uh, resource saving thing because hoppers are laggy and if you put a dropper above them, you know, it cuts that down just a little bit. I'm not sure if they change anything in 1.13, but that's just something that I do. And lastly, I know we're already, well, okay, not lastly, but second to last step where you're going to want to take this dropper right here and realize that you probably should have placed solid blocks behind here. I'm sorry, you guys, I totally forgot, but that's okay. Not a problem. Just remove the water if you're in survival mode and then just replace all of these with normal blocks. We're going to be taking rails out the back, place nine of these and then an, ob <clears throat> an observer at the end. And this is your output. So we're going to be playing with that signal right there. And I know, I know redstone dust, I don't want to use it as much as the next guy, but this signal out the back is what actually triggers the next minecart. So the faster that this signal is, the faster that you'll get another minecart. If you really want to hyperspeed it, you can probably cut off this signal here and then use dust instead of, dis uh, instead of observers. But this will be triggering a lot and dust is pretty known for being extremely laggy in Minecraft. So if you'll have like 15 to 18 dust triggering constantly while your villagers are sorting, it's going to make a laggy area even worse. So even this, even these three pieces make me wince, but trust me, it's, it's for a good cause. Uh, it needs to be faster because the way that we cut off this system is by extending this piston here. And um, it, it just needs to be a very, very fast system. So uh, the second to last part that I mentioned is up here. We're going to take the output from every single one of these villagers and make sure that this system will never fire without... Uh, It'll never fire when there are villagers in this place. So my first prototype of this design was over here. Um, I've modified it since then. But the problem that I encountered was I got as far as everything you see here, but the minecart would just keep cycling over and over and over. And then the villagers would just build up on this last block. And I didn't have a solution because it would break the minecart with a villager in it. And I just didn't know what to do. And then I realized, oh yeah, all of these villagers send a redstone signal. So basically what we take here is a very big i was corrected to an or gate i see this as an and gate i don't care it's just a it's a gate of some sort uh basically what it means is if every single villager is in place it turns off all of these torches and this piston retracts which means this signal will no longer fire which means the minecart will basically stop cycling uh and what that'll do is if i can actually um place just a few more villagers in here to demonstrate if i place one more villager in place, it'll shut off the system. And then if I remove one villager, it'll actually trigger that minecart, or it should have triggered that minecart, but there aren't any minecarts in it. So what that would have done is trigger the minecart and the whole system would start up again and then turn itself off once the villager gets into place. Uh, and that's basically an ease of use thing, which means this is a hands-free design, meaning every single time you kill a villager and start sorting, the system will basically just turn itself on. Um, Actually, after, after having checked that design, I, I made a mistake here. So we're going to take a piston, and we're going to use a nice little feature that my stream chat told me a while ago. Apparently, note blocks can be used for bud powering. Yeah, pretty cool. So you just put that in there, and if I'm not mistaken, this should be done. Although this default state of this observer should be over here, because in our case here, all of our villagers have filled in. So if we just uh, kill one villager, that should trigger the system. And if I made no mistakes, it should do that. And then it'll just replace the villager, turn it off. If you went through and killed all of them, it would just keep the minecart flowing and then replace every single villager one at a time. Now, if you're observant, you'll notice that this is much, much slower than what I showed in survival mode. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, before we do, though, we're going to have to wire up this system in the back. Uh, how you do this is kind of up to you. I mean, there are a few different ways that you could go about this. Um, Basically, these pistons just need to trigger one after another. So 
on Minerva, we had this six long, which means uh, which means there are five modules here. We made it six. Um, what I did to fix that is this whole system, if you use the rails exactly as shown here, won't work if you built it any longer. So what I did was I took two pieces of dust and then I just like extended it. And then on this block here, I had to cut it off and then redirect the wire because this power is a dropper. But this is just something we had to do. I used a couple of bits of dust just to extend it out. Um, so it was a little bit easier for us to wire up at the end here. But as for this tutorial, I mean, however you find works, uh, I'll just wire up something in the back here and show you that working. So a great way I found to wire this is if you take these three dust out here, this will be triggered by an observer, so it would be a quick pulse. Just extend this by one repeater, face it into a block with a dust on top of that so that you can bring the signal up, into a two tick repeater, place a dust here to power this piston first, and then block, block, and then a three tick repeater right here. What that'll do is every single time the minecart cycles, it'll push every single villager into the corner so that every single time the next minecart comes, it'll always be able to pick up a villager. All right, now for the bit that I know that you've all been waiting for. Beast, how did you make it go so fast? Uh, it's a cheesy way to say it, but I call it overclocking. So this is a bug in my system, kind of, because you have to force it. Um, this isn't the way it's supposed to run, but as I showed you in survival, if you've got 100 plus villagers built up here, it's a really, really good way to go through all of them. I'm going to switch my uh, tool to a sword just so I don't break any blocks in creative. So if I just kill every single villager here, let this trigger once, and then manually trigger it, you can force two minecarts to be rolling at the same time. Now I say this is a bug because if you let it go too fast, this will happen. But basically this will just be firing the system two or if you do it again even three times as fast and you can just get a whole lot of villagers flowing through here. Um, if you want to force this as a manual way on your world, I would place a lever right next to the piston and then you can just flick it. Um, like I said, you can see the villagers doubling up in some spots. It's not the most... Uh, it's not the cleanest way to do it, but it's very, very fast. It's way faster than any other design. Um, and you can see it pretty much corrected itself here. But yeah, if you just let it flow in and then like fill up all of the sl all the spots, the system will basically shut itself off again. And then as soon as you kill one, it'll trigger it again. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too complicated. It really is just an upgrade to another design. Uh, you can take what you've already built and just turn it into something completely... Uh, I want to say unnecessary, but it's just significantly faster. It's just a little bit more redstone and a simple water stream and your trading life will be significantly easier. So I'll be posting this link as an upgrade in the description below for the other video. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and uh, thanks for watching.